everybody, this is John with the Pine Tree. I have the great pleasure of being here with Sarah Lunsford. Mm -hmm. And Sarah is a local media veteran who has decided to jump into the fray on the other side, right? That's right. Number four candidate for District 4. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're going to do a little bit of those who, what, when, where, and why yeah. pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. who, what, when, and why? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like many people, I'm a Bay Area transplant. I came from Fremont originally, graduated okay. from UC Berkeley, and uh, studied in Cambridge for a little while as well, Cambridge University in England, and came to the county 11 years ago, started to work as a print journalist, mm -hmm. covering primarily Board of Supervisors and Angels Camp City Council at that okay. time. So if you actually put all my years of sitting in the Board of Supervisors together, it would be almost a full term. representative for Calaveras County for Tim Leslie, so okay. Tim Leslie, and covered Amherst County for the other and moved on to work for Mr. Cogdill, who is now Senate Minority Leader, which is a very cool I'm thing, on my glasses here. and uh, worked for him as a field rep out here for Calaveras County and parts of Tuolumne County as well. And the reason why I decided to run for office is I've been sitting and watching things for right. 11 years, right. and I think the county is at a tipping point right now. We've either got to get the growth, both economic and developmental growth, managed and under control, or else we will end up in a situation where we don't want to. And that's not going to be a, an easy path, is no, it? No, I it's don't. It isn't an easy path, but you have a, a general plan that's being rewritten right, right. now, and at Optimistic was two years out, yeah. and more realistically, maybe four years out. So basically, you have an antiquated general plan actually providing governing the, yeah, governing yeah. the growth for the county. And I think what we need to do is we really need to sit down and look at where we want growth and um, what we need actually in the general plan as well. I'm very... Uh, adamant about putting an agricultural element in the general plan and also a water element so that those two very important parts of keeping our county growing healthily right. are actually in place. Right. I think one of the things that a lot of, well, some people miss is that agriculture actually provides the open spaces for our county. Right. And unless you protect the agriculture, you, or you end up with a county that's just pretty much rooftops. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can do conservation banks through the state. You can um, sort of, you know, help agriculture sustain itself, and I think that's what we need to do instead yeah. of building rooftops on it. At the same time, we have to protect our residential neighborhoods and sort of the interface areas between the residential areas and agriculture. And a lot of that comes down to infrastructure. It uh, does. Some of that. It does. I think what we need to do is build in concentrated areas where the infrastructure is already existing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is going to be infill development. Yeah. And it, I think it has to be or else we end up with rural sprawl where everybody's on five and ten acre parcels. Now, do you see a lot of a future for, I guess, what's become known as like the agritourism type of thing? I think it's there's um, a huge future for okay. it here. As long as the county, there's a lot of disparate entities in the county mm -hmm. like we have what we have over what 12 special districts for water right and we only have 42,000 people in the county mm -hmm. and most cities are <laughs> larger than us and have one water district right you know so I think what we need to do is we need to start to really come together with the different entities coming together and really communicating very yeah. well, which is not usually seen in the governmental entities. I mean, let's be fake. I mean, let's be honest. The people have been mm -hmm. chatting pretty well lately. Yes, as they have. I mean, which just is as really of late, good. it seems yes. like everything's. Uh, I mean, who would have know. thought Angel City Council and this Board of Supervisors would ever have gotten together? I mean, you they're, know. they're holding hands, mm -hmm. singing Kumbaya. That's it's right. Nice, uh, <laughs> which is a good start. Yeah. But I think really okay. all the discussions need to come up with a workable plan and then mm -hmm. everybody needs to, to fall in line with the plan. But agritourism is actually, it, it's one of those economic realities that we have already here. With the wine. Grown, with the wine yeah. industry, especially yeah. on Highway 4. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's a lot of commercially zoned areas across from the airport, where the old airport used to be, over here in Frog Jump Plaza. There mm -hmm. were three phases to that initially. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, I think there's some down in Valley Springs as well, right. where you could actually set up as a local entity a, a business enterprise zone, where you you 
you know, you provide tax incentives for businesses, small businesses, 25 to 50 people, mm -hmm. to come up to the area. And I think it's important for the Board of Supervisors to really partner well with the Chamber of Commerce to do a marketing plan to actually get out there into Silicon Valley, into San Francisco, into right. these areas where these right. small companies may want to move up here. The housing is still less. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cost of living is a little higher, let's face it, but the housing is less, and that's a major component in your cost of living. Right. And they could move up here and do quite well. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think there's becoming the realization mm -hmm. as well, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, is that when we have an economic downturn like yes. we have now, and mm -hmm. real estate takes a, a mm -hmm. I mean, we have to broaden our jobs base beyond Absolutely. the trade, so to speak. I mean, even though those are a valuable component. Oh, they're, they're a very valuable yeah. component, but for a really healthy economy, you can't rely on two components. Right. Tourism right. And, and actually, you know, building, yeah. building uh, rooftops. Yeah. And also when, when you bring in those types of other business enterprises, you also have the opportunity to bring in more education opportunities, higher education opportunities for, you know, our young people. Right. You have um, a higher population level, which the population is going to grow anyway, but you have yeah. a higher population level that then stimulates all these other sort of retail as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think really retail needs to come in to the county now, but I think it needs to be managed efficiently and it needs to be put into areas where it's not going to Aspects so you're not promoting a Walmart on every corner? Not on every corner, okay. no. Right. And I'm not saying Walmart per se, but I think we need Just something, yeah. something, yeah, where, um, you know, the people in this county can shop. Right. Because, I mean, what is it, 41, about approximately $41,000 a year is the median income for a family for. Yeah. And that's with both, both adults working. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't have to go out of the county to buy necessities. The old pants analogy. That the you pants <laughs> analogy, the underwear analogy. And, you and know. it's worse for men because women can at least boutique shop a little bit. If they can afford it, but the boutique shops that's true. really are not geared. They're geared towards tourists, so I don't think there's going to be a, a real competition between the boutique shops and retail that's affordable for those who live in the county. And plus, I don't think that people should have to spend 20 to $30 on a tank of gas to go shopping. Right. You know, they can use right. that money for food. Standing in one of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind yeah, of so, a, yeah, you know, so there you go. Oaks and mm -hmm. 12 acres there, so 11 yeah, acres, yeah, or exactly. yeah, anyway. Yeah. But you have to be able, it's a balancing act. You're, you're going to grow. The county's yeah. going to grow. The projection is what, 80,000 people by 2020? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. That's the, pro the projection. And they need places to live. And there are already quite a few entitled lots. In the hot, I mean, they're already through the process, and they're going to be built out. Right. So, right. and you know, apparently, there's not enough entitled lots to actually handle the population. They're still here. not. They're still not, is huh. my understanding. Um, so, we've got to take care of business, provide the infrastructure, get a, a plan into place where we manage it, but we still need to protect our agricultural element and make sure that everybody has enough water as well. So the idea is. So the character of the county stays consistent as, as we grow. Is that a, is I guess that's probably a, that's good a way a, to put it. Exactly. I think we can do that, but I think we're at one of the last moments where we can do that. Yeah. Because we're at an economic downturn, and even though it's a it's a negative thing, it's actually protecting Calaveras County from just exploding too quickly. Right. You have to look at sort of the silver lining. Well, I think there is one because I think mm -hmm. it it is everybody's talking. Oh, absolutely. Because I think even absolutely. people who have, uh, you know, I think people, there's room now for dreaming of long-term goals yeah. without even you differ mm -hmm. a little bit on yeah. your philosophies. Right. So I think really what, what you need is you need a strong board of supervisors, a strong uh, city council, and uh, people who are willing to work together. Put the egos aside, put all that aside. It doesn't matter whose name is out in the paper. It's right. what is getting done for the people of the county. That's okay. the most important thing. So I guess in in summary, what are the what's a what's a Sarah Lunsford uh, supervisorial 
run? I mean, what, is, <laughs> what does it look like? What, what would you like to, you know, what, what would you like to... to I didn't phrase that well. No, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> what would um, it look like? You know what, what it would look like? What people expect? You know, expect, what, yeah, well, what would you like to get done? You know, I'm somebody who's a facilitator. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't mind if my name is out in the paper or not. I mean, a lot of people, I've, I've written for publications for right. years, and a lot of right. people still go, who are you? You yeah. know, and, and yeah. that's, that's been done because I believe that education, either through articles or, or even behind the scenes, is more important than the personality and getting out there and yeah. I think that's really what I bring to the table. I observe things from a lot of different angles and that comes from my journalistic background. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, experience with the assemblymen actually gave me a very firm grip on how rural counties are, 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 are viewed on a statewide level. Is it the ugly stepchild? It, or is we it are the red-headed ugly stepchild. The red-headed ugly stepchild. <laughs> ah, okay. Absolutely. And I think because of that, we have to come together and we have to communicate more effectively. You just lost the red-headed vote. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, you know, I think we really need to come together and communicate and plan the county the way that we want to. And I think one of the, the good things about rural counties is you have independent-minded people yeah. who want to keep their county the way it is. And I think I could act as a really good facilitator in that regard. You know, protecting the agriculture as well as growing sort of the, the economic and uh, rooftop base in yeah. the areas where they belong. Because I'm not afraid to say no. Yeah. And isn't there, um, and I guess one of the little things for spending time around Sarah in the family, mm -hmm. is she really likes policy. Yes, I do. I, I'm a policy mom. Yeah, one yes. of the things is she of policy. policy. Yes, so yes. I will actually read every word of yeah, you know, that's the, the legislative uh, edicts and the laws that come out. You know, I'm one of those people. So, you know, this type of thing is just a hands on and getting in there. So, were you in school? People say some people in your paper, you know, threw no. stuff at you. No. That no. Just, no. I'm just quiet, you know. Okay. I'm just behind All the right. scenes. Like I have been in this county for the last 11 years. But yeah. I step forward now because this is the time for me to step forward. And I don't count it in days. <laughs> I just go, oh, it's still April. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, June is coming. Yeah. June is coming. Mm -hmm. So, go register to vote. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I want to also add it doesn't matter to me, and this sounds really weird from a candidate, but I think it doesn't matter who you vote for in this election. As long as that candidate takes the ideas of the other candidate 